What's up, Pan Dudes? Hey, the Pan Dude Abides. And I'm here with a, a Tag Heuer uh, Carrera Caliber 1. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the watch here a little bit. But I also want to uh, make a point here and point out what the differences are between this and a fake uh, Carrera Caliber 1. Um, some of these things might apply to other Tag Heuers, but in, in terms of um, the specifics, uh, this is only going to apply to this one, and it's because I know that there are a number of fake um, Carrera ones out there. So anyway, first of all, um, the most obvious thing is that this, it comes in this box, in this kind of uh, cherry-colored Tag Heuer box. It uh, came with this uh, cream um, interior. It came with a rubber band and an alligator skin band, and also this uh, Tag branded um, uh, watch strap removal tool. So. You'll, you'll first thing you might notice is when you're buying these they come with either no box at all or the more traditional black tag box which does not necessarily indicate that it's a fake and this is by no means supposed to be exhaustive or authoritative on what is a replica and what is not but it's just to help you if you're looking at this or other watches um, things to look out for so that in and of itself doesn't mean it is uh, but it, all the official ones came in this particular box so um, First thing I'll take a look at here is the watch itself, and it's really a, a nice looking watch. It's very simple in many regards. Uh, it only has um, the, uh, the, the sub dial there that show the seconds, and uh, it's a black face, a little texture, pet, little texture in the, in the uh, middle, and uh, a silver case. Like I said, a couple different watches. The most interesting thing about this um, in the deployment class here, which I'm going to take apart so that I can show you the back of this a little more clearly. Um, but uh, the... Uh, uh, by design there, that's the super easiest thing to get apart. Um, but it is a completely mechanical movement, which that means is there's no automatic um, cam or weight or lobe or anything on it. So this is a manual wind only. And so the first thing you'll notice is if you're looking at this watch, which is a WV3010, um, and you see it in an automatic, or in this case, without a crystal backing, and it's just covered, which probably means it's a quartz. So obviously those are fake because the, the only uh, legitimate ones are this at a 6498 uh, dash two movement, I believe. So, no, a fantastic movement. Um, the other thing that I'll notice are, and I'm going to show you some pictures of some replicas and fakes all, that I found online. And I'm not advertising for these sites. Um, yeah, I'm not going to block out the the URLs. Some of them are already gone. You know, uh, the good thing is they've been shutting these down, making it harder to uh, even get duped. But um, there are still a lot of them out there. So I'll overlay those pictures here. But one of the things is the bezel, it's a 44 millimeter case, but the bezel is pretty narrow. And so one of the things I've noticed is that in order to get either the width right or the face size right, but the movement inside the replica watches, the bezel is much wider. And it doesn't, and, and right off to a person who knows this particular watch, you kind of notice that something's wrong because the bezel's a, a flatter angle and much wider. On the back, uh, a number of them will come with automatic or man mechanical movements, I'm sorry, but they're usually an Asian built um, uh, replica movement and they actually are mechanical and they look almost exactly alike. But one of the things I've noticed is that um, on some of them, this little screw over by the smaller gear here is either missing or it's not blue. And so I don't know why, sorry. Um, I don't know why they, they, they missed it and did not. But anyway, not blowing that screw was kind of a, a cheap miss on their part. So um, sometimes, like I said, the screw's missing or it's not blued and it's just a silver. Uh, okay, so the other thing I'll show you here is that the second hand, as it sweeps around, and this might be a little hard to see, uh, but the red hand, basically, I noticed that the tip actually extends a little further out than that inner um the the inner portion which is the seconds it's tracking here so it 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 overlaps the hash marks almost completely and splits the difference between the outer edge of those inner hash marks and the top of the numbers so pretty minute uh, change there but um, a lot of the ones I've seen 
the red hand does not actually even completely extend to uh, over the, the the inner hash marks at all. So that's another um, kind of telltale sign that it's not right. The other thing is these were a limited edition, so they were 6,000 pieces. And what you'll notice um, on the back is, like, uh, unlike most of the tags, all the information is printed around the bezel because that's the only place they could put it. And if I can show it here, I believe it's just kind of sandblasted or laser etched. The, the, um, the, the edition, the issue number is right here. And then under the crown, it says Sapphire. And then up at the top, it says Crystal. And then over here, it says Swiss Made since 1860 on the bottom. I'm sorry, the lighting is a little rough here. Um, and so what I've noticed is that on the fakes, obviously, some of them actually will fake uh, a number uh, uh, in the series. Um, some won't do anything at all. Some will put um, limited edition and they'll the sapphire crystal. But basically, the the words are out of place um, in, in some fashion there. Or if you're missing the um, the number, say three thousand out of six thousand, then that's a that's a big that's a big uh, a big red flag for you. Um, again, the other thing I've noticed here is that um, below the adjustment, uh, right above, um, right in the, I'll try to center it here, the adjustment indicator has, is over a little flat spot on the uh, back plating here. And on the legitimate tags, that backing, the, the flat area right behind it, is has a machine turned finish that extends all the way up to the um, the checkered portion of the metal. That's actually pretty hard to do, and it's a pretty fine detail. And I've noticed that on the fake ones, either it's just flat usually, or the machine turning is just in the center where they could squeeze it in and doesn't extend all the way up to the edges of the flat spot, or they've actually just kind of stamped and embossed circles in there. So. Um, if you see some variations on that that don't look quite right, don't look very um, uh, very refined, then that is um, probably another indication that it is not correct. So uh, hopefully that helps. Um, those are kind of the, the 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 first things that I look for when I'm looking at um, this particular model watch. And oh, the last thing I'll throw out here too, and I'll see if I find a picture of this, but the two main visible gears on the back of the movement here have holes in them, as you can see. One has six square holes and the other one has um, eight round and kind of uh, kidney bean shaped holes. And I've noticed that on the fakes, there are often no holes at all. So that's uh, kind of an easy one to spot. Some of the fakes will have a perfectly uh, good facsimile of the the cutouts here but um, a number of them I've seen don't have any holes in the gear so another kind of easy way to, to spot it. All right I think I've hit everything that um, I was thinking of and wanted to share with you. Obviously keep in mind that that's no guarantee that you're getting a legitimate or buying a, a fake but uh, as they crack down on the counterfeits that's very helpful. Otherwise I really do like this watch it's really a solid watch sapphire crystals um, it's nice that it comes with a couple of bands and then obviously it's a it's a 21 millimeter um, wide at the lug so any band you can find that fits at 21 22 when you squeeze it in there uh, you can really change this the style of this watch I have a stainless steel band that I a bracelet that I wear with this and that kind of really dresses it up but then you throw the leather one in there and it kind of makes it look a little, a little sporty so very very cool watch um, limited edition pretty hard to find they are a few years old at this point so you definitely can find them but I want to say that 2500 to 3500 is a uh, pretty um, average price for them at this point and uh, I think it's a pretty good deal pretty unique watch 40 hour power reserve as far as I know when you wind it up but just keep in mind that this is a manual wind so you don't get the convenience of wearing it and having it um, continue to generate power so Peter Von Panda with the Tag Heuer Carrera Caliber 1, out.